right. but we're watching the master. Mm. I was praying. Meditating on God and saying, Lord, give me, give me. I want to speak right to him. I'm not going to preach a message you never heard. Amen. I'm not going to preach something that some of you's never heard. But when God begins to expel your life and expel your situation, that's what I'm after. Amen. Is to get that closeness with God yes. that He can speak through me yes. and speak mm -hmm. directly to you. Yes. But I begin to think about this. Now think about this for a minute. Now I know it went year after year and whatever, but think. California, my friend, there is fire. Yeah. It's a burning day. Yeah. <laughs> Louisiana was hit by a hurricane. Texas is in famine. Right. Florida has famine and pestilence. Uh -huh. Colorado was underwater. Oklahoma was hit by some of the biggest tornadoes ever. Right. New York City was hit by two planes. Yeah. You search it out, my friend. Amen. But I can watch. I'm about to feel something. Yeah. I can see it leaving from the West Coast and it moving its way across our nation. Uh -huh. You can call it prophetic or whatever you want to call it. Right, I'm going to tell you, you're watching it leave. And I'm talking about the glory of God yeah, yeah, yeah. in the United States of America. And the next place it will hit, and it already is, is Washington. D.C. You pray for your leader. He is a Muslim and he needs to be saved. Amen. Preacher man. Put it on YouTube. Put it on his Facebook and email it to him. I will stand before Barack Obama and tell him that there is a Jesus Christ who loves him. And he will stand before him. Amen. Amen. Says the truth. 
shall set you free. I believe tonight, Brother Chuck, that we're living in the last days. And it's time to warn the people. And it's time to get closer to God. Because there's coming a time, my friend, that we may not have as 75 or 80 of us in the house of God. And be able to hear the wonderful music. And be able to enjoy the preaching. There's coming a time, my friend, that you may not have a Bible. There's coming a time, my friend, that I may say the name of her Uncle Bob. And they walk in the doors and handcuff me and take me down. Down there in Coxon, and he said, Hear about Jesus. And I'll say, Like me up, because so was Paul and Paul and Silas. They were in the inner prison, and they began to sing at the midnight hour. And the Lord set them free. I'm telling you, I said to God, It is time that we get what God has truly told us. Oh, yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mary brings the alabaster box. Yes. Yeah. And really, the way I looked it up, it kind of looks like this. Mm -hmm. It's rounded, comes up, and it has a tooth neck on it. And on the top of it, it has a lid, if you will. And on that seal, you could break that seal, and you could begin to pour out a little bit of the oil if you wanted to. But I come to find that when Mary came into the house, Brother Ronnie Dole, she needed something from God. Yes, yes. You hear me tell yes. it? She needed something from God. Right. She didn't worry about what Job thought. She didn't worry about what Cindy thought. That's right. She didn't worry about what Sister Saint Divine in the back had to say. Yeah. Mary knew that when she came into the presence of God, she had to give her all. Yeah. And when she did, yeah. she took the alabaster box yeah. and she broke it. And some of you saints of God, you need to let yourself be broken. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. Is this alright tonight? Amen. And you know what she done? Come here, brother. Help me. Would you stand right there for me? You know what she done? She got way down here. And when I get way down here, brother Ronnie, this puts me in a humble position. Amen. And this is where we need to be at. That's right. But she took this out of Astro Box and she busted. Right. And she began to anoint the feet of Jesus. Right. And when she did stand right there, I'm going to read this to you because you won't fall out with me. Amen. But when she did, when she anointed his feet, right. she took her hair and began to wipe his right. feet. Now, I've been touching the ground. I'm not talking about your shirts touching the ground. I'm not talking about your long sleeves or your facial hair. Are you hearing me to preach? You've got to find out that this woman's hair was her class. It was her dignity. It was her honor. And when she bowed before him, she took herself and she said, Lord, whatever your will will be, I, my Lord, submit myself to you. I got to find it didn't matter what her hair was. What it mattered was, she said, Lord, I don't want to be first. I can be last. preachers out there want to name. They want to put on a show. It's a mockery and a stench in the nostrils of God. You don't have to send me 35000 in my bank account for me to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Pray ye one for another. Amen. Carry ye one another's Birds. Mm -hmm. It's time, church, that we stop worrying about what sister so and so thinks right. and what brother so and so thinks. Amen. It's time that we get to a place that we may be the pastor of the church, we may be a deacon, we may be over the sound and musicians. But I come to find it don't matter who we are, right. it matters who he is. Yeah. And Dignity 